Have you ever taken anything for granted? I mean, just anything. Hot water in your shower? The car is starting when you go out in the morning on a cold day. Glass of water when you're thirsty? Sometimes it's easy for us to do that. They say we live in a land of plenty. That's probably true. Our whole mindset is that we get what we work for. Once we got it, it should work. And everything should just move right along at a wonderful pace. I mean, after all, that's what our country was based on, is the idea that you work hard, you get things. You do things, you get things. It's what we look at. The problem is, for me, Sometimes, I don't want to accept help. I don't know anybody else in the whole wide world that gets like that. But I don't want to accept help. I can do it. It's how we raise our children. I have a niece that came in one day, and it's become a family saying, I can do it my own self. She came in, and she was convinced whatever it was she was doing, she didn't need help any help at all doing it. And since we get that feeling, sometimes we start taking things for granted. It's it's just a cause and effect type of thing. I can work for it, it'll work, and I can do it. Can you get your own salvation? Oops. Sometimes we forget that one, don't we? We forget that Jesus came to give us He gave us salvation. We start to take that for granted. Now, this is one of the problems, and this isn't new, just in case you're wondering. This is a problem that's been around for thousands of years. God gives people something, pretty soon they say, that's mine, and they stop giving God credit for what he did. They stop giving God the glory for what goes on in their lives. And sometimes in our country, especially in our country, and why do I say especially? Because there are people in the world, when they turn on the tap, they don't get clean water. They don't have showers. They don't have a lot of the things that we have. So we in this country can take for granted the things that happen. Sometimes we take for granted the people who served us, our veterans, the people who went and did things for us. We take for granted that they were just going to go and do their job. And so, just as with the veterans, we do the same thing with Jesus. Now, here's one of those little things. Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes, third chapter, 14th verse, I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing can be taken from it. God does it so people will fear him. We tend to forget that and take it for granted. People tend to accept that God is going to continue to do good. And since he does, we take it for granted. We don't give him the credit. We don't give him the thanks. We don't give him his due, if you will. His due is everything. But we tend to forget that. We figure it's ours and it's what we deserve. You ever stop to consider? I've heard a lot of commercials on TV, get what you deserve. Let me ask you, do you really want what you deserve? I just... I thought about that one day watching, and and they were talking about, I think it was tennis shoes or something, and they said, you deserve the, I'm like, do you really want what you deserve? I know I don't want what I deserve. God told us what sin, what the wages of sin are. They are death and hell, that's it. 
I don't want that. It's what I deserve, but I don't want that. And so I need to remember what my actions bring and not take for granted God because he put everything in motion. He has planned it and his plans will not fail. Paul told us in 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter, he starts off almost with this. It's the fourth verse, not the first one. For we know, brothers and sisters, that we're loved by God and that he has chosen us. Now think about that. Before you were born, God knew who you were. Before the earth was formed, God chose you. Do you take that for granted sometimes? I do. I do sometimes. I start taking for granted that God chose me. I say, well, it was my choice. I got to choose to to believe. The problem is I wouldn't get to choose to believe if God didn't choose me first. God chose, and then I get to respond. And sometimes I take for granted because I say, I chose. That makes me the important one. It takes me and puts me up here and takes God and moves him down a little bit. That's a bad thing to do. I'm I'm just, me personally, I think that's a bad thing to do. Whenever you start lowering God and raising you up, it comes with a huge and terrible cost. I'm not saying you can't do it. There are plenty of people out there who do. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of self-help books where they tell you how great you are. And they don't say one single word about how great God is. They tell you how you can fix you. And they don't tell you how God already has. God chose you. And sometimes we don't realize this. Ephesians 2, 4. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. And it is by grace that we are saved. It is by grace and not by the works of your hands, but by grace from Christ that we are saved. Ephesians 2.8 For it is by grace you are saved through faith. This is not from yourself. It is a gift from God. How many times do we say, if I get a gift, I have to give a gift? If I get something, I have to give something. What can you give God that he doesn't already possess? What can you possibly give God that is as great as what he has given you? And so a lot of people will stop when they get to that part and say, I can't give anything to God that he doesn't already have, so I don't need to worry about it. From now on, all I have to do is live and God will take care of me. And we start taking for granted the life that he gave us with our faith. And pretty soon... Not saying this happens to you, but it happens to me from time to time. I start moving me up again and moving God down because his grace was a gift. And I can do what I want to with his gift. I can't tell you how many baseball bats, gloves, footballs, cars, trucks, and whatnot that are in my closet that my boys used for this long. They were very, very precious gifts when we gave them to them. And within a very short period of time, they were totally worthless to them. Those gifts that we gave them, they didn't want anymore. We can do, we as people, not we here, but we as people can do the same thing. We can take the gift of God and lock it in the closet and act like it's nothing. This grace that he gave us, this gift... This gift of salvation that he has given us. We can push that aside. And Paul warns us about this. This is 
for me, this has always been one of the real interesting parts. Uh, before I go on, how many of you are Jewish? Just checking. You see, the Jews are called the children of God. They are the chosen of God. You realize that, right? That's through the whole Old Testament. The Jews are the chosen of God. That means that you, fellow parishioners, are Gentiles. Each and every one of you is a Gentile. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. That's kind of how this goes. If you're a Gentile, you are not the chosen ones of God. If you remember what Solomon wrote, God's plans are God's plans. His children were his children. They were the hand-picked ones. We as Christians, and if you don't think this is so, go back and look through history. The Crusades are a perfect example of we as Christians saying the Jews killed Christ, therefore they're the bad guys. The Jews are the chosen ones of God. And Paul tells us in Romans, he's talking to both the Jews and the Gentiles. And he says, you Gentiles, if some branches have been broken off and you, your wild olive shoots have been grafted in among the others, now share in the nourishing sap of the root, do not consider yourself superior. We as Christians sometimes do that. We start saying we are owed. And Paul says, don't do that. Don't do that. And Paul told the first century church, now I know we say, well, that was 2,000 years ago. It doesn't really matter. Remember the first part. God's got a plan. He put it in place. And what was written 2,000 years ago wasn't really written for them alone. It was written for us today. Because as you look around, you're looking at all the Gentiles. Paul says, you're a wild wild olive shoot. And one of the branches was broken off so you could be grafted in. Don't be conceited about it. You don't support the root. The root supports you. Granted, they were broken off because of their unbelief. But... You have to stand by faith and don't be arrogant, but tremble. For God will judge you as well. That's kind of how it works. And sometimes we take for granted, since we are the Christians, we're the ones who have believed now for 2,000 years, it comes down, we've got this strong belief, this strong faith. We don't have to worry. Paul says, you better worry. You better act with fear and trembling. Because your actions are what bring you out of faith. Because that's what it all comes down to. Not taking God for granted, but having faith in his son. Not taking the gift of God for granted, but having faith in his son. That his son chose you. And keeping it firmly emplaced in the front of your mind, not in the back. Not over here somewhere where you don't have to worry about it. You weren't chosen for the team. You don't have to worry. Keep it firmly in place in the front that you were chosen for a reason by God and that you are supposed to be doing day by day what Paul tells us. Day by day we're supposed to always have faith, always pray, and always do good. See, these things kind of slide us all together. It pulls it all together so that we don't have the opportunity to get lazy and take for granted God's precious gift to us. Because he's called us to do things. He's called us to do good. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do what I told you to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. Take care of your neighbor as yourself. But before that, he said, here's the most important one, and it's the one that people take for granted all the time. 
You have to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your spirit. That's it. You have to love God with everything that you have. And if you do that, then you stop taking God for granted. You stop taking his gift that he's given you, this precious, precious gift, and saying, I don't have to worry. I'm tired today. I'll do it tomorrow. I don't put off till tomorrow because I need to be resting in God day by day. And if we are, and like I said, this isn't condemnation. This is wake up. If, if you're doing this, if you're doing every day, you wake up praying, you go to sleep praying, you work throughout the day to do good, then this isn't for you. But if you have those days, like I do, where you take a day off and say, I'd rather be fishing. God says, you can be fishing, but you can also be doing good while you're doing that. You have to remember day by day not to take me for granted. You have to remember day by day that everything, everything, everything is mine. So give to God what is his, which is everything, and give to yourself a whole lot less. Because if you take for granted God and his precious gift, You just might get what you deserve. Our Heavenly Father, today we come to you. Today we praise you that you have promised us that we will not get what we deserve. We will not get those things that are in store for those who forget you. That we will not get the things that bring pain but will get eternal life. We'll be able to come before you bow down and say, Lord I pray in faith. I believe in faith and I love in faith and I pray that you will accept the gifts of my hands in faith. So Lord today, reach down to each of us Those who are hurting, touch and heal. Those who are depressed and lonely, fill and make whole. Those who are kneeling before you, bless and lead. This we ask in thy name, Lord Jesus.